This video is sponsored by Rotolite. Hold that thought. Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant. And today I want to give you a quick hands-on update with a pre-production sample of the $1,400 AOS 2 from British company Rotolite, which, as I just said, has sponsored this video. But to be clear, one, sponsored is not the same thing to me anyway as surrendering my critical thinking skills. It's not how I'm built. It wouldn't be good for you or for me. And I don't do it. Two, Rotolite had no input into this video, no preview of this video, no oversight of any kind, which three is as it should be. And I thank them for respecting those boundaries without having to be asked. So with that out of the way, here's the bottom line to date, beginning with the good news. The EOS 2 is the most unique and sophisticated light I've ever had in hand. Fair enough. For those of you who haven't seen the first video, it is a continuous bicolor RGB LED panel with a very wide 3000 to 10,000 Kelvin CCT range, millions of colors via its HSI functionality, thousands of built-in electronic filters, and a dozen, precisely, special effects. In continuous mode, it is usable for video and stills, but it is also a wireless high-speed sync flash with built-in receiver for Elenchrom triggers, which can take advantage of that color flexibility with virtually no recycle time. And a battery that will power through far more shots than any internally battery-powered dedicated flash I can think of. I found that in both continuous LED and flash mode, 50% power in the first case, 100% power in the second, I never worried about running out of juice. Hallelujah. I stopped the continuous mode test after three and a half hours because the battery still showed two or four bars left and I had other things to do. I didn't even bother trying to drain the battery with the flash in all candor. But the thing that actually made me happy the thing that made it a joy to use, again, this is just me, is Rotolite's graphical touch interface. It is the best I have ever seen in a light. So lighting manufacturers and camera manufacturers, for that matter, look and learn. As for the actual quality and quantity of light, well, beyond the TLCI, the index that supersedes CRI, Television Lighting Consistency Index, of 99%, an output of 11,500 lux at three feet that Rotolite quotes. My own eyes tell me that the light is beautiful and clean, as good or better than anything I've ever seen or used, including a panel that cost more than twice as much, with power sufficient at 100% to serve as A, a crisp key light for portraiture with included diffuser dome on, no need for additional diffusion or a fill at about just one meter away, uh, just out of frame. B, a softer key light for portraiture with included diffuser dome on again and blasting through a three and a half foot diameter scrim just about at the same distance, though to be fair at a two or three stop penalty, still no need for a fill useful for video or stills. C, an even softer, enveloping Rembrandt level key light here in the Batcave for this video. Once again, no fill. This time, without the included diffuser, now bounced into a V flat closer to two meters away. Yeah. Even D as a key light for a two shot with included dome diffuser, no fill required, even softer with a scrim from as far out as three meters, and you won't want to use it without the included dome under that scenario, because then specular highlights get funky with the individual LEDs, and it's not comfortable for on-screen talent because it's bright. All of this quality, quantity, and flexibility comes wrapped in a lightweight, relatively compact, and aesthetically pleasing package, engineered with onboard thermal management so good that in continuous mode, it can go essentially indefinitely at 50% power, daylight balance, with no need for the fan to kick in at all at normal room temperature, with a current draw maximum of just 120 watts, although heated up enough. The fan gets a little too loud for my taste, but getting into it. A. 
The EOS II does not defy the laws of physics nor math, which is to say, as I've just implied, there is no substitute for surface area if you want a soft enveloping light. There is nothing magical about the standard dome diffuser that comes with it. A one by one circle does not have the same surface area as a one by one square, never mind a 36 inch or 48 inch softbox or a four by four scrim. And with a mostly all plastic housing with complex electronics inside, it is not something to cavalierly throw into a grip truck, expecting it to take hits the way a much simpler, older HMI style light can and does, or take out into the rain. B, the EOS II does not defy the truism that nothing is perfect. There is room for a number of small but meaningful improvements that, given the care the company is clearly taking with the rest of the light's design, are a bit surprising, actually. I'm talking about one, a non-locking cable that would sometimes catch on the anodyne yoke, sometimes detached just from the weight of the brick pulling on the too short cable. Yes, I know, gaffer tape, Velcro, blah, blah, blah. But still, there should be some kind of quick release light stand mount or at least a longer cable. Two, an on-off switch location, an operation that make one-handed control more difficult than necessary. Three, the ability to display output in f-stops, in addition to percentage, that would be nice. And four, a method for attaching the diffuser dome, which is not nearly as well thought out as the rest of the light. Hold that thought. C. There are a number of very interesting things I have not been able to try out yet because they aren't available yet. From the smartphone app to their electronically variable diffusion smart softbox and their Bowens mount adapter. And I do have questions about how each of these will work in practice. I mean, how reliable and quick to connect, for example, will the smartphone app really be? How much difference will the variable electronic diffuser actually make, given that it is likely, I assume, to have approximately the same as or only marginally larger surface area than the included passive diffuser dome? Perhaps even more importantly, will the Bowens mount adapter work in such a way that the AOS 2 will have to fit inside a softbox, where I imagine thermal management will quickly become much more of an issue? The larger issue that these last two questions imply, I think, the thought I just asked you to hold, really, is perhaps the largest issue of all, an issue shared by every LED panel I've ever tested, and that is light modifiers. Put differently, I've yet to see an LED panel from anyone that offers the breadth and depth of light modifiers available to single-chip onboard LED monolights from sufficiently large softboxes to snoots, gobos, and more. And in this, I think I'm seeing a missed opportunity, which is to say modifiers designed specifically for the EOS 2's unique form factor. Everything from super lightweight, large surface area diffusers to variable aperture snoots, which attach to the EOS 2 with, say, magnets, or a very robust steel ring adapter with an opening as wide as the light itself within which to secure the light to custom equally large diameter modifiers, the weight of those modifiers and the light borne by the ring itself rather than the plastic housed light itself. But hey, maybe I've got this all wrong, or you don't mind carrying, say, a 4x4 scrim gym kit with extra stand. We will find out soon enough, I hope. D. In any case, you do have to ask yourself if a combination continuous LED flash unit is better or more cost effective for you and your use cases than separate purpose-built lights, which to wrap it up and recap for now is to say first, the EOS 2, as I said at the outset, is fascinating and intriguing with output quality, quantity, and flexibility, which could meet all of our needs with a single unit. Yet it strikes me that its constellation of capabilities is so diverse, so unique in my experience, that its best and highest use will likely be recognized only by those of us who truly have a matching constellation of needs. To my surprise, for example, I suspect that there are YouTubers like me who rely on LED lighting every week, 
but rarely use flash except for portraits, usually in service of testing other gear like lenses, as I did recently. The EOS 2 just might be the perfect tool for this set of use cases, so I will be using this a lot. It might be ideal for an event photographer. The key decision points probably being how diffuse you want the light to be, how much time you want to spend attaching light modifiers to it, that is futzing, and most importantly of all, whether or not you have an assistant with you to serve as a human C-stand. And uh, oh yeah, whether you're responsible or not for photos and video. Second, the EOS 2 arrives on the scene straddling two very competitive markets, continuous lighting and flash, crowded with and increasingly dominated by companies that didn't exist 20 years ago. LED lights per se are no longer novel, but instead the new normal. There are a couple of manufacturers in particular who are really pushing the quantity, quality, feature set, value envelope of the continuous LED space, though none comes to mind that brings all of the things to the table that the EOS 2 does at the price separately or in combination. So finally, with all of this said, I am really looking forward to seeing and working with a production unit and all of the accoutrement I haven't been able to get my hands on thus far ASAP. Hold that thought. If you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, join the conversation below because this is an incredible audience. If you'd like a copy of our Streets of New York, the book, head over to www.3bmep.com slash books. If you'd like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one video session with me for a portfolio review, explore or hone your artistic voice, select gear and more, sign up at www.3bmep.com slash booking. Finally, consider supporting our work by using our no-cost-to-you affiliate links down below, picking up some official three blind men and an elephant swag at 3bmep.threadless.com, sending coffee money via PayPal, or best of all, Join us as a patron over at Patreon. However you choose to support us, as always, we thank you for it.